Hi everyone, thanks for subscribing my channel. Uh, what I have done, because you guys are looking for documents as well. So I created this new blog site, giganetworkers.in. What you can do, once you are logged into this particular uh, website, web page, then you can go to this section called Secure Your Enterprise. And suppose if you are looking for cybersecurity related documents material, you can go inside cybersecurity. In this case, we are going to learn about ICE basics and architecture. So you can go and click to ICE, Cisco IC. Once you are inside Cisco IC, you can see I have uploaded part one, part two, and few of the contents related to ICE certification. So if you're looking for part one of ICE document, you can go and click. You can see your uh, new link will come here where you can go and check all these slides related to the presentation. Now, these are the master files. So maybe exactly whatever I am delivering in the video, you will not find uh, as slide one to slide 10, etc. But what you can do, you can navigate and you can see that which uh, portion actually I am explaining inside my video. So these are the uh, good uh, reference document that you can go and uh, get from these links. So I hope that you will like my video and this documentation as well, and it will help you to gain more knowledge insights inside Cisco security uh, appliances and Cisco security certifications as well. Next topic we have to understand about ISK architecture and a various component. So let's understand. Basically in ICE you'll find that we have four major component. We have PSN, that is nothing but the service node. We have administration node, that is PAN. We have MNT, that is monitoring. And then we have policy exchange grid or Pixie grid. Okay, so these nodes now again, uh, I'm going to define that. What does it mean by node? What does it mean by personas? What type of services uh, we have? What network resources, endpoint and role? Each and everything we are going to understand, but this point of time, we should understand the service, that's PSN, administration, that PAN, MNT, monitoring and Pixie grid. Mostly in the production environment, as you'll well, you find that you have to understand at least PSN, PAN, and MNT. So let's understand one by one each and everything. First thing, I start with the node. What is definition of node? Now, this node can be physical instance or can be a virtual. So you can deploy the OVA file, or maybe you may have some iOS, I, ISO files that you can extract and install over the uh, virtual uh, images or uh, or hypervisors, etc. Okay, so it may be hardware, it may be uh, virtual. Uh, we have OVA files. Uh, we have so many OVA files, and if you go and check this Cisco download page, you'll find that is starting from generation one and then two, and now we are somewhere in 2.7. Uh, one of the popular release for ICE is 2.4, and we are going to do perform lab on 2.4 and 2.6. These are the versions of ICE. Uh, what I will do in the next section, that I'll log into Cisco page and I'll show you at least uh, the images, what is the naming convention by default when you're downloading those OVA files or other images from Cisco, but you'll find that you need big up lines if not, you are using Cisco UCS type of servers. You need big appliance with very uh, good capability in terms of CPU processing and RAM. Okay. Then what is Persona? Persona is nothing but uh, determine the services provided by node. So you have the node, that's your uh, appliance. And inside that you have services that is personas. Majorly we have four different type of persona. We have administration, policy, monitoring, and then we have the policy exchange or the Pixie grid as well, correct? Now what are the use cases or what's the main role of all these persona? 
So persona role, so for example, service node, as name suggests, it will go and create uh, services or policy uh, services, uh, radius and tachycus servers. So whatever services we are creating or whatever policies, decision policies we are creating for the endpoint that will fall under PSN. Now what is PAN policy administration? You can think like this whenever you are log, logging in to the ice where you are landing you are landing to the web page and that web page or that GUI or that ice dashboard is nothing but the PAN Okay policy administration node. So in terms of uh, say Programmer in terms of application programmer you can think that you have the front end then you have the back end your front end is nothing but the pan policy administration node your back end is nothing but the psn that is the policy service node correct now obviously we want to do the troubleshooting and monitoring so where it can be stored for that we have mnt and if you want to uh, learn and take action related to contextual services or contextual uh, contextual entities then we have the pixie grid okay great now one by one we can go and check uh, the features related to PSN uh, pan MNT and pixie grid so for example PSN and this diagram below that you are seeing is actually very important related to all type of uh, identity services so you have something called supplicant you have uh, networking devices termed as a uh, network NAD or maybe network devices this is nothing but authenticator supplicant authentic authenticator and then you have the authentication server now this authentication server may be connected with the external uh, AD server or external uh, maybe any type of database servers who is going to store the credential of uh, user identity. So user identity is stored in other terms. Now we have the PSN policy service node that is integrated with any external resources in between. So in between the networking devices and the PSN, we have protocol running radius or tactics and then the devices so these devices they can again use various type of method like mab or dot one x etc or maybe web, web uh, users so here you can see that we have the web auth posturing client provisioning actually these are the policies so you can go and create the posture the client provisioning web authentication these things i can go and create over the PSN and again it can be distributed to n number of device across the organization that's the key factor we have with PSN then policy administration node again I told you whenever administrator log in he's logging in inside the GUI or the dashboard and that dashboard is nothing but the pan what we can do we can do uh, overall management of each and everything so license management admin authentication authorization admin audit these things we can do now uh, in terms of actual deployment in terms of say for example distributed deployment we may have one primary one secondary one primary is the active one and secondary may be the backup here you can see that I want to write policies but before writing the policy, I have to land upon or I have to log in to the PAN policy administration node. Again, I have the primary and secondary so I can create policy and then this policy will be sync or pushed actually to PSN, 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 PSN. So here you can see each and everything is getting pushed to PSN uh, because I have the PAN primary. So again, the policy is going to push or I have to do the sync policy should be sync across the uh, eyes different personas so it should be sync across all the PSNs and the policy administration node now again you can see that from PSN uh, we are pushing something to the pan and the pan is going to update each and everything 
all right so i hope you understand that the use of uh, PSN, the use of PAN. Let's quickly go and discuss about NAD. Again, I told you this is working as an authenticator uh, between NAD and the policy server or the I server. We have radius protocol that is going on between NAD and the end user. We may have different type of authentication as well. Correct. Now, what is the role of this NAD? Role of this is it is working on behalf of, or you can think this is working as an authenticator, not behalf of, but it is a networking device from where the request will uh, reach or carried through the ICE server. Now, from ICE, depending upon what policies we have, uh, we may get the DACL from ICE. We may get the group tagging from ice again it depends upon which what type of uh, security policy what type of uh, policy we have from ice for the networking devices the next term we have the pixie grid i already told you that uh, they are there to do the third party integration so maybe i can uh, get the uh, context information from so for example firepower or maybe any other networking or security devices so that I can get into the eyes and then eyes can analyze those and it can take decision. Now again, there are various terms like pixie grid controller, pixie grid publisher, pixie grid subscriber. So here you can see the subscriber list where you can see the ASA, IPAM, WSA, and other devices, IPS and other devices. Now starting from 2.4, the ICE is also supporting as a subscriber. That is the uh, profiler pro. So although you are getting the information in terms of context, you can send the information as well uh, in terms of profiler probe. That's the use of Pixie Grid. Again, it's uh, very important in, in, in terms of if we are in the highly secure environment, we enable the Pixie Grid and use it properly. Then finally, we have the MNT, monitoring and troubleshooting node. Everywhere after deployment, in operation day to day we need to take the logs we need to take the tech file we need to take the various type of syslog message or whenever uh, the problem is happening uh, we have to collect the log so all those type of la logs and the troubleshooting the stuffs are inside the mnt node and one important point here is that max one primary and one secondary mnt is possible Okay, so if you go and check the notes, you'll find that uh, it is given that how many maximum nodes you have in terms of pixie grid, how many nodes you have in terms of uh, administration node. So what will be the list number and what will be the maximum number? Even uh, better that we can go and refer the data sheet as well before doing the actual deployment for the ICE. Before I starting discussing the architecture of ICE, Let's first of all discuss that what are the capability and what exactly ICE is doing. Now ICE is nothing but the uh, identity services and who can understand the identity of a various endpoint. So what type of endpoint it can understand? It can understand wired, wireless, VPN, any type of mobile devices, etc. Now once ICE can understand that which is the endpoint and what type of endpoint again see the endpoint may be uh, bring your own device it may be corporate user it may be guest user means the endpoint may be of different segment now depending upon that which is high priority segment then the low priority segment the eyes can do the authentication now authentication process may be common for different type of endpoints say for example map or dot one x or any other but after doing the authentication what authorization means how much those clients can do and once they uh, these clients are getting access getting authorized then what they are accountable for Okay, so all these three important things like authentication, authorization, and accounting that is done via the eyes, but eyes can understand in different type of endpoints, and that's the key we have with the eyes.
Now, if we go and check the evolution of ISO before that Cisco has introduced ACS, Cisco Clean Access, NAC, etc. But you can think ICE as a combination of all. So whatever solution that Cisco has given so far, uh, so far the best one is the ICE because it has n number of capabilities. Now when we are talking about n number of capabilities, here you can see in the diagram that who, what, how, different type of threats, when, where, health score and CVSS. Apart from that, it has some other capability as well. But ICE uh, is a identity server who is able to understand each and everything related to endpoint. Okay, and uh, sometimes we may, may think, oh, endpoint means laptop. Endpoint means any type of, uh, so for example, printer or any type of handheld devices. But now think like this: even we are talking about laptop, there are n different type of laptop with different type of operating system with different type of patches, fixes. In general, these terms means associated terms related to the endpoint. They are termed as an attribute. So maybe one entity having n number of attributes. Uh, and those attributes we are sending to eyes and eyes could understand those and then uh, eyes can take action correct so here you can see in the diagram that who when what where how health threat and cvss apart from that eyes can take the uh, context sensual in information with the pixie grid so we have the integration with uh, external restful APIs or we have integ uh, integrative or, or integration with APIs and then we can do the pixie grid integration as well that we'll check later on so we can take the feeds we can take the input and then ice can um, uh, take the action what are the benefits we have greater visibility we know that once we have eyes it can understand n number of endpoints so that's the visibility is high now we have better security feature and experience for bring your own device and that's actually a big big advantage we have with ice again ice uh, they are thinking that they are inside the zero trust model it means they are not trusting anything and once you have the authentication authorization means once you have authentication then you can get the authorization once your authentication or maybe authorization get broke if authentication get broke means everything will go but suppose your authentication is successful you have an issue related to authorization then your authorization can also decrease okay then it is uh, scalable it's highly segmented as as i already told you the different type of segments are possible in ice and ice can act upon different type of segment metrics ICE can track and this is very important that's why it is highlighted in red that it can track uh, up to 2 million concurrent endpoint session and you can see that how big this so ICE is capable of tra uh, tracking 2 million concurrent session now again the summary we have that we have the ac uh, asset visibility access control guest access bring your own device segmentation threat control and device administration Okay, so ICE is going to give these many high bullet point. Apart from that, there are some other features as well, but these are the top features we have inside the ICE. Again, that ICE is trusting none, means it is based on zero trust model. And here in the diagram, you can see that it is going to improve the visibility and decision, software defined segmentation, service access, entitlement. So now it is, ICE can be integrated uh, with, say, for example, ST WAN, and uh, ICE is a part of DNA now. So Cisco has one policy plane, and that policy plane is nothing but the ICE. Now this DNA can be integrated with ST WAN, can be integrated with Cisco Data Center solution that is ACI. Uh, again, the use case is that when you are uh, dealing with multi-domain architecture. So in case of multi-domain architecture. Uh, with a user they will get one security group tagging 
and that tag will flow throughout the network when we are talking about multi domain architecture and then that policy will be uh, retained from one end system up to data center and vice versa okay even apart from that if you are not using uh, the ice inside this sq and naci uh, but still we know that ice is a robust tool and it is providing n number of capability features and the security options all right so we can stop here let us continue our discussion and let's check the dashboard and the rest of the terminology we have very nice dashboard i'm going to log in and show you the dashboard and this dashboard we know that whenever we are logged in we are logging inside the dashboard that is nothing but the pan policy administration node now this pan you can see that uh, the topmost part and again it's not that visible uh, let me quickly log in and show you this so here i have my eyes hosted over cloud now on the top you can see the first portion where you can see the summary endpoint guest vulnerability again you have the home uh, context visibility operation policy administration box center etc now on top this is this belongs to the policy administration node again if you want to go and create the policy you can go to the policy and here we are going to check these things later on so we have authentication authorization profiling posture client provisioning these things are actually related to policy PSN policy uh, service node uh, this is the work of the PSN to create such a such type of policies now in our example uh, we are dealing here with the single deployment mode so what does it mean by single deployment mode is that all the four personas I have in same ice deployment so here you can see that I have the administration and how I can navigate at this. So I went to administration and deployment and then I click to ICE. Uh, host name is ICE. Here you can see the FQDN, the IP address, the node type, identity services. This is the primary because this is standalone. Now, if it is in distributed fashion, so I may have primary and secondary for MNT also, I may have primary, secondary, and they can be distributed. Then I have a number of uh, service nodes. And again, I may have integration with the Pixie Grid. Each and everything you can see here. So administration node, the monitoring node, that's the role is primary, policy service, that's the PSN, enable service, session service, uh, enable profiling service, uh, enable the device admin service these things are enabled for service node and finally pixie grid is not uh, enabled but you can see the um, important three one uh, pan mnt and the services i have everything in single node because this is the standalone node correct but you can see that uh, you have nice dashboard let me go back to the home and we can discuss this in upcoming sessions the below portions that you are seeing here is belonging to the mnt the monitoring node and that's the thing we have in the ppt so pan mnt when the if you go to policy you can reach to the psn as well inside operation you can see that uh, we have the troubleshooting option as well the diagnostic options as well we can go to the radius we can check the live logs stack across live logs policy list endpoint assignment then we have a troubleshooting option like diagnostic tools uh, download logs etc okay so overall we have the nice uh, dashboard and let's quickly discuss that whatever we have study in uh, previous section that we have personas like pan so pan is there to do the administration you can create the policies and then you can push to PSN PSN is actually where you have to create the policies re related to radio stack across profiling auth posture uh, sponsor post, uh, portal etc mnt is monitoring troubleshooting and network access uh, pixie grid then we have actually it is not shown in this diagram to take the contextual data and then you have the authenticator that is the NAD. 
so what does it mean by service service is nothing but some work correct uh, whenever we are talking about service this is very much uh, taken from the application world so services maybe in my windows server i i may have n number of services so services uh, uh, for example network services uh, maybe any web services maybe any http services any uh, ssh services etc etc like that in terms of is the network services are uh, network access so who has what type of access profiling posture security group access monitoring troubleshooting etc okay so these are the services related to ice then what is a network resource network resource uh, again we'll see that uh, in terms of endpoint so endpoint belongs to mdm mobility uh, management services or network devices they have to do authentication with respect to radius and then the authorization will come into into the picture and they will get a certain level of access and then obviously the accounting will be there that the a particular user after authentication authorization how much he has done what type of work etc correct and finally we have the endpoint so all the endpoint devices such as uh, uh, such as say laptop or PCs or printers etc. Those those are fall into the uh, endpoint category. Role I already told you that we have primary and secondary role. Now in terms of deployment model, I may have a standalone deployment that we have seen. In case of a standalone deployment, your all the four personas are inside single deployment or uh, in the production network, we have distributed type of deployment. So we have the MNT somewhere, we may have uh, Pixie Grid somewhere, we may have PSN somewhere, we may have primary and secondary uh, PAN or the administration node. Correct? So it depends, role depends upon what type of deployment we have that can be changed. Now, if we go and put everything together, we'll find, and here you can see the summary diagram. So first of all, we should understand the terms. So what does it mean by node? What is personas, different type of personas? What is services? What is NAD? And again, different type of rules of different type of uh, personas, like what MNT can do, what PSN can do, what PAN can do, what Pixie Grid can do. Correct. So for that, uh, we have this summary slide and assuming that up to this point of time, uh, we understand the role of different type of uh, ICE component or personas plus the network device and different type of endpoints. Correct. All right. So let's stop here. Let us discuss about authentication. Authentication simply means that you are you means who you are authorization what level of access you have inside AAA we are getting all sort of uh, answers for these questions like what who what when where how all these things uh, will be there inside AAA now while we are talking about authentication here you can see whatever users we have for authentication like either it's 8021x map authentication or web auth in all the cases, you can see here while you're writing the ICE rule for authentication, say you will give the name, for example, name is dot one X. Then you have to define what is the radius attribute means service type NAS IP that will be your switch IP username SSID. If you click here to the plus sign, you have options like wired 8021x, wireless 8021x, map, uh, uh, wired map, wireless map. All these options you will get here if you click to the plus sign. Then allowed protocol. So allowed protocol, although we are ch uh, checking here, say default, but you have option. So inside maybe default network, you can check if you go inside your eyes you can check that okay is it a eep fast eep chaining eep tls peep eep md5 etc you have long list of protocols for the authentication finally where is your identity store is it a internal or is it a active directory ldap radius identity sequence all things will be matched inside the 
identity store once you are creating the authentication policy finally in the bottom you will find that what is the action you want to authentication field reject if user not found reject if process fail drop so these options we have i'll show you all these option in upcoming slides so here i have one rule say for dot one x that is wired x again this is that i am doing the authentication for the user so suppose i have one user name abc it is doing 81x authentication with ice in that ice we have certain attributes so here you can see that long list of attributes and a few of the attributes are actually very important so uh, say for example attribute 1 6 and then in the bottom you'll find say 61 is also very important so one what one attribute is giving it's the username what 6 is giving is the service type so here you can see for dot 1x the service type is framed correct and if i go here to the nas port type you can see this is 61 is ethernet so these option are actually very important when we are talking about the radius attribute let me show you here so one number you can see that the username is not equal to mac address obviously username is some username and password you are giving to the nic adapter service type is framed and the nas port type is ethernet it's a very important attributes then suppose if we are writing policy for wired map so this time we have authentication policy here for wired map here you can see again that username so for mac address policy is username is not that mandatory then what next we will check we'll check this service type so for map the service uh, type should be call check then we can see here the 61 that is the ethernet so both the dot 1x and the map we have the nas port type 61 is ethernet here so let me show you these things as well here in the diagram so service type is call check the nas port type is ethernet and the username is mac address because this is the mac address based authentication correct useful authentication conditions we have the so service type we have these options for medium we have 802.11 ethernet virtual ssid we have call station id vendor eesid username we can give username eep tunnel options we have we have eep type option so all these options you can uh, note it down is just for your reference and while you are creating the policy you can use it now here you can see if i go inside say policy policy element to result authentication inside that allowed pr protocol here you can see i have long list of protocol this i am going to show you while i log to the device as well so we have long list of uh, protocol supported here in these long list of supported protocols what you can do that you can enable as many if you enable as many protocol so what will happen that uh, you are providing more and more and tighter security and uh, that simply means so you can enable allow eep tls allow eep md5 so all those options you have mac authentication bypass already we have discussed that for mac authentication bypass also you have options like allow pap allow chap allow eep md5 okay and here you can see some notes as well that mac authentication is not a defined standard cisco use service type that's actually very important and it's a, a type of interview question as well that for 8021x what service type we have for map authentication what service type we have we have call check okay service type equal to login 8021x we have uh, this is that third party thing but yeah basically what type of services you will create over ice should be 802.1x wired or wireless it should be map wired wireless okay it should be web auth and then you have so many others but three should be common so 802.1x map and web auth will be common rest authentication policies you will create as it goes now here again one example for authentication policy where we have the 
a network access here so you can see the network access is eep tls again the second condition for eep fast gtc here you can see that uh, the network access eep again i am using eep fast and eep uh, gtc again you can see one more policy for pip ms chap version 2 why all these things we have why all this policy we have because more condition you will allow more tighter security you are giving that's the one reason okay now finally you have policy say for internal user because remember all the time for 8021x what you are giving you are always giving internal user for map authentication what you will give you will give internal endpoint okay so that's the way that you have to write the policy because endpoints they have the mac address they don't have the user names now so we have option here for authentication and here you can see the definitions we have so reject means we are sending access reject back to the nad continue means continue to authorization regardless of authentication outcome drop do not respond for nad nad will treat as if radio server is dead okay so we have all these three option Re uh, reject continue drop as noted states not all eep uh, type supports continue option so one note is there for you okay so let me go and log into the ice and i'll show you few of the option related to protocol so here if i go back in this section i have to go inside the result authentication then i can show you that so here here i am in the home page what i'll do i will go to policies you can see policies then results so let me go to policy policy element results once i am inside the result you can see i have allowed protocol if i double click here inside default network protocol you can see inside default network protocol i have authentication bypass checked authentication protocol say allow pap say allow chap allow ms chap like that we have allow peep allow ms chap version 2 allow eep fast you can see long list of protocol is supported here and as for a company policy you can choose one versus other okay so these things these options we have to choose from here in the authentication policy once my authentication is successful then i have this authorization means what i can do what level of permission i have inside the network and you will see in this particular uh, recording that what type of uh, what important types of permissions we have i'll show you all those things one by one and we have some authorization conditions if we met those conditions means once the authorization is successful obviously then we met those condition and once we are fulfilling those condition what type of access i have inside the network so i have access related to downloadable acl so whatever acl rules i have i can use that those i can have say vlan permission what vlan assignment is there i can have say sgt as well that is the security group tagging so at least these three four things we have so where in the database i want to go so that will become from dacl downloadable acls what vlan that user belongs to that pc belongs to that printer belongs to that wireless device belongs to all these things will become under say uh, we can say the dynamic dynamic vlan assignment to the authenticator to the switch so that will be pushed from ice to the switch for that particular user okay and then obviously we have sgt as well but here you can see that we have common task like these web authentication or to smart filter reauthentication msec net there are n number of things that we can do once my authorization is successful okay i'll show you all these things inside the authorization result as well let us see this dynamic acl assignment in this particular animation so here you can see that i have one printer 
connected to this particular switch port. This is my authenticator. This is my authentication server. Now what will happen here? Let's see. Yeah, so let me clean this as well. Now with help of EAP over LAN protocol, I am reaching to the authenticator and between authenticator and the I server, I have this radius protocol running. Once radius will authenticate this first, authorize this second, then it will change the authorization. Means you have the authorization. What type of authorization I have? Say access type is access except. Tunnel private group ID printer. Tunnel type 1. Tunnel medium 1.6. Okay, so here you can see in the bottom that VLAN. It is assigning the VLAN, which is checked name is printer so maybe inside this printer i have assigned vlan 10 11 like that whatever okay these are only the name but the access type is access except suppose if you check mark dacl here then here you will get some permit acl inside that acl you can give one subnet to other subnet I mean source and destination you can define so those things you will get and this is the order of operation while you are troubleshooting the network at that time you can go to the switch first of all you can check that authentication is successful authorization is successful then do you have mac register miss this particular printer mac registered here inside the ice or not so these things these basic parameters you are checking while you are doing the troubleshooting so again for troubleshooting also it's very important to understand the order of operation that means do you have any break here in the e do you have any break here in the radius? Do you have any break in, uh, in the return traffic or the return change of authorization policy? Do you have any break in the return from here to here? So all these things you are checking while you are doing the troubleshooting as well related to this. All right. The second option I have here, the VLAN assignment to the switch. So here you can see that VLAN is checked. This is corp. Voice, obviously this is the name of the VLAN, then voice domain permission, so what permissions we have, and Cisco AVPR defined traffic voice. Means you will get one voice VLAN assigned to the switch and this particular IP phone will get that. Not only those things, obviously you can assign some other features as well on this. So if no VLAN send switch will use a static switch port VLAN configure dynamic VLANs for any user that should be different in VLAN was VLAN configured on port necessary for voice authorization to work. So what it is telling that was VLAN configuration on the port it's uh, it's one of the use case suppose if it is connected with IP phone then what you can do that you can configure say switch port was VLAN something like 22 Okay, so that you can configure For the IP phone authentication Plus authorization both of the things No problem. We'll move to the next and we'll see what configuration I have over the interface obviously your switch is connected with the switch port so over this suppose this is gig 101 what configuration i have switch port this is not required if you are using dacl downloadable acl so what is required suppose this is connected with phone and then this is connected with pc so suppose this is this is the phone here and then i have this phone and then this PC. At that time, you can give switch port voice VLAN, suppose 20. Then switch port mode access, this is okay. You can use this access group. At that time, you have to use authentication open. Authentication port control, that's correct. Map is for printer or other type of authentication if you are using. Dot 1x you are using if you have a user connected. So those things will come in the upcoming section. We are going to discuss about what is the switch configuration or what is the authenticator configuration. Obviously, you have to enable IP device tracking as well. So what type of authentication you can see here? We have the uh, ACL as well configured on the switch and this ACL is this source destination and some other configuration. Now, 
when I am downloading the ACL. So at that time, the ACL name is permit all traffic. Let us see. And the DACL content is what? Permit any to any. Now you can see that my authentication is happening. Then my authorization is happening. Authorization is successful. Then it will change the authorization. Now here you can see the permit IP host this this any switch dynamically substitutes the endpoint address. That's okay. And then contents the downloadable access are arbitrary can have many unique uh, downloadable ACLs as their user permission group. Same principle as pre auth port ACL TCAM restriction. So the thing here is that this ACL it will download. Once you have the permission, it will download this particular ACL or whatever ACL defined here. It will download it and then this switch will work according to that ACL policy. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the VLAN assignment, the ACL assignment, the SGT assignments. The ICE will do automatically once they are communicating via radius protocol. Okay, great, we'll move. Now security group tags, I already told you that the tagging is also possible and in this animation, I'll come to know that how this SGT is used for the mobility. So I have an employee whose tag is say SGT5 and production server tag is 8, application server tag is 7. Now, that is the basic fundamental of ICE that it is doing classification, propagation and enforcement. Okay, and in this case, you will see here that this particular group, that is the employee tag. So this is the employee tag, this is the source and the destination is app server, it's permitted. So from employee, it can easily go to the production server. From employee, can I go to the application server? So, Actually, this is the application server. So from imply, this is source, this is destination. So five can go to eight. That's correct. There is no problem. Then app server, app server, it's okay. Production server, production server. So same to same, that's okay. So at least here we can see that, okay, employee can, employee tag can go to the application server. That is possible with this with this SGT and with help of ICE basic fundamental classification propagation enforcement it is possible obviously this thing also you have to put when you are putting the authorization rule now here we have an example of authentication policy and example of authorization policy how it look like suppose I have one policy called map I am using wireless map condition is allow protocol host lookup and then what is the default so whenever we are using mac address based policy your default policy is internal endpoints whenever you are using 802.1x your default policy is internal users so here it is say ad internal user but it should be user mac address endpoint dot one x users so wireless 8021x default protocol default network access as allow protocol and by the end you have the default statement so very straightforward authentication policy in the authorization policy you may have so many options so that you need to check step by step so say radius probe network access network device name equals ace 4710 or Radius name is switch start with uh, like that. You may have so many options, so many conditions, so many simple compound conditions you will get. And then finally you have permission. Inside this permission, you have one permission of tagging as well. So here you can give say tag employee five, app six, production seven, etc. Because first of all, authentication will happen, then authorization will happen and then they will enforce the policy to the switch according to that that user or the endpoint will work. Correct? Here is the policy set as well. 
again we have some authentication policy for map internal endpoints for dot one x it should be user okay so let me go back and let me show you some of the policy results so what i'll do i'll go to policy and then we'll see the policy results related to authorization and then we check the downloadable SEL and few other things all right let's go to policy policy say we have condition and result so first of all i'll go inside the results and inside authorization you can see i have downloaded authorization profile and downloadable acls or decals first of all let's go inside the authorization profile you can see i have so many different 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 profile suppose if i go inside cisco web auth first of all you have the name description access type access type is accept or reject then you can see inside the common task where you have so many things say tackle name permit all traffic ACL I can define the ACL security group I can define the security group if I click here to the more what security groups I have so let me go and click here you can see I have contractor employee test all these things I have correct and inside the security group I can see the tree view as well like this also I can see then VLAN I can do some VLAN assignment like VLAN 10 12 13 like that so these options we have let me remove this VLAN assignment I have I can give VLAN assignment this is not the end here you can see was domain presentation web redirection is checked here so whenever this user will go it will redirect it somewhere auto smart port access vulnerability re-authentication max sec need template ASN VPN all these options we have here correct so that's why when the authorization will be fulfilled or when the authorization will be completed at that time whatever common task you have it will be assigned to the switch then we'll verify that downloadable ACL so inside downloadable ACL you can see you can create you can go here click plus sign you can create your downloadable ACL or DACL or whatever by default there also you can use but it depends upon your corporate policy or your company policy see how many numbers we have so let me go back and let me show you one of the say tier 1 access inside tier 1 access downloadable ACL you will see on the list what type of ACL I have here you can see this big ACL this should be downloaded by the switch for tier 1 access so deny IP this permit TCP UDP blah blah uh, permit IP any any like that you have so many things here correct so this is the label of permission that you will get once your authentication is fulfilled and after that obviously your authorization is fulfilled so first of all authentication then authorization and then change of authorization will push from the eyes to the end user hi everyone thanks for subscribing my channel uh, what i have done because you guys are looking for documents as well so i created this new blog site giganetworkers.in what you can do once you are logged into this particular website web page then you can go to this section called secure your enterprise and suppose if you are looking for cyber security related documents material you can go inside cyber security in this case we are going to learn about ice basics and architecture so you can go and click to ice cisco ic once you are inside Cisco IC, you can see I have uploaded part one, part two, and few of the contents related to ICE certification. So if you are looking for part one of ICE document, you can go and click. You can see your uh, new link will come here where you can go and check all these slides related to the presentation. Now, these are the master files, so maybe exactly whatever i am delivering in the video you will not find uh, as slide one to slide 10 etc but what you can do you can navigate and you can see that which uh, portion actually i am explaining inside my video 
So these are the uh, good uh, reference document that you can go and uh, get from these links. So I hope that you will like my video and this documentation as well, and it will help you to gain more knowledge insights inside Cisco security uh, appliances and Cisco security certifications as well. Next important topic we have ice node installation. What are the prerequisite or what are the important information we need? We need to configure the host name, IP address subnet, default gateway, DNS, name server, unique time zone, NTP, SSH, and the admin username and password. Now, what will happen when you go and deploy the OVF file? And here you can see the link that you can go and uh, download. Suppose for lab purpose, if you want to check the uh, features of ICE, then you can go and download the evaluation version eval version from Cisco site so you can go and download the OVF file that we have and that OVF template I will show you that how we can deploy in few uh, minutes now here suppose if we have the vSphere client uh, you can go and simply click or maybe import that's it and then you can you have to follow uh, next 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 button obviously we should go and give how much RAM how much memory how many hard disk how many core uh, processor all those things I'm going to show you in upcoming few minutes now what will happen uh, once will this ice will uh, start uh, installation then it will prompt you the setup means it will go to the setup mode now at this point of time what you have to do that you have to type simply setup Once you type setup, then you have to go and give all those informations that we have listed here So we should go and give the host name IP address default gateway, etc Once you go and do all these information means once you go and put all this information then it will take approx 30 to 50 minutes to go and do the installation now once we have the successful installation of the ice node you'll find that you can go and log in via the cli show application status ice if you go and run this cli command you should see that all your applications are up and running means whatever application we have enabled those should be up and running rest whatever features or services we haven't Enable those will show you as a disable state Correct. So what I'm going to do now that uh, let me go and uh, Show you how you can do the installation So here you can see that I have my ice node 2.4.0.357 I will do double click on this because I have my virtual box and I can go and give any nice name say for example ice node 01 import once I go and click import it will go and import that file and then what I will do that once the uh, import will be successful I'll go and give the uh, resources so we'll allocate the resources and then once I do the power on it will go to the setup I'll go and type setup and then I will go and fill out all those required information So here you can see that import process is taking some time because this file itself is a big file So let me show you the file size and that is 12.8 ZB file now in protection network it may be much bigger than what we have here all right so let me pause for a few seconds just to get the import process done all right so here you can see that it took approx uh, 10 minutes just to import 12.8 gig of uh, VM instance now here you can see that we have the process and other stuff So let me click to the edit virtual machine. I can go there uh, Default RAM you can see that it chosen uh, 16 GB 
I can go to the processor and I can give say 2 plus 2 4 then virtualization I can enable it apart from that you can see that it took uh, 200 gig of SCSI hard disk then the network adapter it took four uh, these are the bridged I don't want the bridge so I can go and use any of my so one of them I can use as a NAT and rest of them I can go and use say VNet1 then VNet2 then VNet3 so like that I can go and use and rest of the things are okay click OK and then start it so this is the green button I can go and start now you will see that it will go and prompt the it is going to prompt the setup mode so let's wait on for this and once it, it prompt then we have to go and put all those informations that we have seen in our slide so let's go back to the slide so now you can see that it is asking about although it is asking about localhost login but you have to go and type setup here once you type setup it is asking about the host name so this is say for example ice and then node 01 is the host name enter the ip i can go and give any ip so for example 192.168.10.100 or maybe 1.100 subnet mask gateway 192.168 so we should have all these informations enter the default dns domain i can go and use this one enter the default DNS and this should be the host name. So what I can go do here, I can give any at the moment say giganet dot n. The name server I can give primary. Do you have any secondary? No. The time is okay. NTP uh, time dot nest dot gov add another NTP no by default this is no UTC is okay SSH you want to enable yes and then the username is admin even you can change it and I'll go and give the password retype the password and now it will take a prox 30 to 40 minutes to bring up all the services okay so meanwhile what we can do we can go back to the slides and let's complete our slide and then we'll come back and we'll verify it all right so we are back to the slides and once you go and put all this information that we have seen earlier so these are the information that you have to put and once you put all this information then uh, this will go and take some practically it will take some 30 to 50 minutes so we can wait now what we can do that we can go and uh, configure the personas we have already discussed that we have the pan psn and mnt and pixie grid pixie grid generally the security more security oriented companies they are doing it pan is the login prompt or pan is the policy administration node you can think this as a management plane psn is nothing but the service plane or you can think in uh, in sdn term that's the control type of plane and mnt is monitoring and troubleshooting so suppose if we are doing the deployment that is uh, uh, on single ice then uh, the psn pan or pan psn and mnt could be inside same box but generally in production network we have distributed deployment so we have couple of psn we have multiple uh, say we have couple of pan we have uh, multiple or maybe n number of psn and then again we have couple of mnt like that 
uh, the deployment options are that we have already discussed earlier now here you can see that in in this case that uh, i span one the span monitoring and psn everything is in same box so it can be like this again once you do the deployment you can go to the uh, administration and you can go and check that what are the services are enabled uh, your policy services enable if you are enable the sxp services you can go and enable that like that we can go and verify the services that is enabled now once all the services are up and running so we can go and uh, verify the certificate as well certificate playing a very important role in the ice because uh, even the users they should also have enrolled with ice certificate and whatever features that we have in terms of services uh, we are doing the certification process first and then the ice is exchanging the actual data okay so ice node must be added to the dns and they should resolve each other a forward and reverse dns should be there ice admin node must have certificate trust to all other nodes that's also very important uh, we will cover we'll see uh, these things later on in the certification process the certificate is a signed document uh, it has the password upi id etc and what about the certificate and what type of a structure related to certificate we have that we are going to discuss in the next session next recordings at this point of time, let's go back to the ice and let's see that how much deployment has done uh, It took a prox uh, 40 minutes to bring this ice server installed Installed and bring up and now if you go here and verify the Application status ice so full command is show application status ice so one by one we'll see that the more and more application will show you the running status so still behind the scene the applications are uh, installing and they are keep running so whatever applications that they will run means they are ready we will show you that running and here you can see that few of the applications they are running they have the process id and few of the application is still not running it will take some time to up and start and running all right so this way we can go install and then we can obviously log in via the GUI and rest of the configuration that we want to do we can go or uh, we can do via the GUI let us continue our discussion and let's check the dashboard and the rest of the terminology we have very nice dashboard uh, i'm going to log in and show you the dashboard and this dashboard we know that whenever we are logged in we are logging inside the dashboard that is nothing but the pan policy administration node now this pan you can see that uh, the topmost part and again it's not that visible uh, let me quickly log in and show you this so here i have my ice hosted over cloud now on the top you can see the first portion where you can see the summary endpoint guest vulnerability again you have the home uh, context visibility operation policy administration work center etc now on top this is this belongs to the policy administration node again if you want to go and create the policy you can go to the policy and here we are going to check these things later on so we have authentication authorization profiling posture client provisioning these things are actually related to policy psn policy uh, service node uh, this is the work of the psn to create such a such type of policies now in our example uh, we are dealing here with the single deployment mode so what does it mean by single deployment mode is that all the four personas i have in same ice deployment so here you can see that i have the administration and how i can navigate at this so i went to administration and deployment and then i click to ice uh, host name is ice here you can see the fqdn the ip address the node type identity services this is the primary because this is standalone uh, 
now if it is in distributed fashion so i may have primary and secondary for mnt also i may have primary secondary and they can be distributed then i have n number of uh, service nodes and again i may have integration with the pixie grid each and everything you can see here so administration node the monitoring node that's the role is primary policy service that's the psn enable service session service uh, enable profiling service uh, enable the device admin service these things are enabled for service node and finally pixie grid is not uh, enabled but you can see the um, important three one uh, pan mnt and the services i have everything in single node because this is the standalone node correct but you can see that uh, you have nice dashboard let me go back to the home and we can discuss this in upcoming sessions the below portions that you are seeing here is belonging to the mnt the monitoring node and that's the thing we have in the ppt so pan mnt when the if you go to policy you can reach to the psn as well inside your operation you can see that uh, we have the troubleshooting option as well the diagnostic options as well we can go to the radius we can check the live logs track access live logs policy list endpoint assignment then we have the troubleshooting option like diagnostic tools uh, download logs etc okay so overall we have the nice uh, dashboard and let's quickly discuss that whatever we study in uh, previous section that we have personas like pan so pan is there to do the administration you can create the policies and then you can push to psn psn is actually where you have to create the policies re related to radio stack access profiling auth posture uh, sponsor ports, uh, portal etc mnt is monitoring troubleshooting and network access uh, pixie grid then we have actually it is not shown in this diagram to take the context sensual data and then you have the authenticator that is the nad so what does it mean by service service is nothing but some work correct uh, whenever we are talking about service this is very much uh, taken from the application world so services maybe in my windows server i i may have n number of services so services uh, uh, for example network services uh, maybe any web services maybe any http services any uh, ssh services etc etc like that in terms of ice the network services are uh, network access so who has what type of access profiling posture security group access monitoring table sorting structure okay so these are the services related to ice then what is a network resource network resource uh, again we'll see that uh, in terms of endpoint so endpoint belongs to mdm mobility uh, management services or network devices they have to do authentication with respect to radius and then the authorization will come into into the picture and they will get a certain level of access and then obviously the accounting will be there that the a particular user after authentication authorization how much he has done what type of work etc correct and finally we have the endpoint so all the endpoint devices such as uh, uh, such as a laptop or PCs or printers, etc. Those those are fall into the uh, endpoint category. Role I already told you that we have primary and secondary role. Now in terms of deployment model, I may have a standalone deployment that we have seen. In case of a standalone deployment, your all the four personas are inside single deployment or uh, in the production network, we have distributed type of deployment. So we have the MNT somewhere, we may have uh, Pixie Grid somewhere, we may have PSN somewhere, we may have primary and secondary uh, PAN or the administration node. Correct? So it depends, role depends upon what type of deployment we have that can be changed. Now, if we go and put everything together, we'll find and here you can see the summary diagram so first of all we should understand the terms so what does it mean by node what is personas 
different type of personas what is services what is nad and again different type of rules of different type of uh, personas like what mnt can do what psn can do what pan can do what pixie grid can do correct so for that uh, we have this summary slide and assuming that up to this point of time uh, we understand the role of different type of uh, ice component or personas plus the network device and different type of endpoints correct all right so let's stop here now we are into very important discussion about ice certificate as we know that ice is a next generation server and whenever we are talking about next generation identity servers or next generation firewall next generation appliances that time certificate play a very important and vital role now let's understand that how ice certificate is working so we have this public uh, certificate framework that is x.509 most of the next generation appliances they are using x509 uh, certification now what is the certification that is nothing but one type of identity so suppose if we have to go somewhere we have to show our passport or visa and all uh, again if you check the passport you will find that you have the photograph you have the expiration date the location etc etc certificate is something like validity for the duration and it has the identity stored as well now this x509 certificate what are the identities it has who is the user what is the endpoint what is the uh, website identity that's the framework but how exactly it is working behind the scene and what are the key concepts we have that we'll see in the upcoming slide now 509 certificates they have the extended key uses for server authentication client authentication key cert signing and many more how it is working like most of the certificates at present they are using asymmetric way of doing the certification now what is asymmetric way of doing the certification we'll see where it is going to use it is going to use uh, in between ice node so the pan and psn and again the psn to the sponsor or guest portal or any endpoint they will do the certification process the pixie grid communication for eap communication for admin portal end user portal etc in short let me show you the diagram first and then i'll come back so we have one summary diagram here you can see and i'll go and i'll show you each and everything in this diagram but you can see here the visual representation that the certification is working in between everywhere so everyone has to share their public key plus they they have the private key locally and according to that the certification process happens so before reaching to that point let me quickly walk you a few of the important slides we have first of all the next generation identity services uh, identity service engines that is ice they are doing certification with respect to each and every uh, communication you can say or each or uh, each and every uh, registration you can say so whenever any of the device or any of the node they get registered they have to uh, follow the certification process correct so again here you can see either say e process or uh, pan administration portal web auth sponsor portal guest uh, access etc each and every places we have this certification process and it's a huge now this how this certification process works that's important and i already told you the key is the public key cryptography or asymmetric encryption now whenever we are talking about asymmetric encryption how this asymmetric encryption works let me show you in the next slide so here you can see that all the devices they have their local key so they have the local key that is private key they have the local key private key and they have the local key that is private key and there is one shared key that will be 
the public key that will be the public key public key now how this asymmetric encryption happens behind the scene again let me quickly explain you this so you have public key and private key public key that will be shared with everyone uh, generally what is happening whoever is your root ca say in this case suppose my ice is my root ca or root server so they can generate the uh, root cert key or public key and that root cert key should go to each and every device because that is the public so going to each and every device then again when they do the authentication they will do the authentication with their local key so this local key or that is the private key will go and do the uh, encryption process first and then the certification process uh, with help of public key so they should have they must have the identity for the ca server and that is nothing but the public key and then they can go and do the uh, private key exchange or the private uh, certificate exchange now here you can see that how this is happening now again let me go quickly back and let me show you the diagram that we have so how it is happening here you can see that we have a b and c correct now in the a b and c communication so we have a we have b and we have c here now the a b c so the endpoint c uses endpoint a public key so suppose c and a they are using the public key it can only decrypt by endpoint a so suppose if he is using the public key of a so that means he will be de uh, decrypted only by endpoint a correct likewise b uses the public key of c so public key of c so p of c that means that b will be decrypted with the c private key correct and that's the way that uh, things are working so whoever public key you have again i told you the public key is nothing but you know the identity uh, of the root server so generally again i'll repeat this term that uh, it's actually easy if you do the certification once you'll come to know that you have the root ca and that root ca will distribute the public key to all so for example a b and c so that means that they have the encryption and whenever they do the decryption whenever they will get decrypted they will use the public key of the root ca that's easy and straightforward mechanism now the summary slide where they are going to do where we have the certification process so here you can see in between pan and psn so here you can see that psn uh, here you can see the pan and then you can see the psn so in in between that you have the uh, certification in between so let me quickly clean here in between the web browser and the pan so the starting should be like this let me draw here so you have your pan you can see in the diagram and so i have my pan and in the browser first then in between pan and psn uh, in between psn and the guest portal the sponsor portal and the endpoint now in between endpoint we have the eap in between psn and pan we have the admin communication and likewise uh, you can see everywhere this authentication process with the certification will happen behind the scene again that's the explanation we have for this particular slide and the summary is that it's very important it's very critical that how the next generation identity services is doing uh, certification process with the rest of the devices and it's easy actually so in next section we'll go and learn about the certification scale factor now here you can understand the certification is happening with each and every node but if you go and do this manually that will be very much time confusing and maybe errors can generate same thing if we can go and do via the automated process 
throughout the endpoint throughout the network then that will be the scalability that we can discuss in the next session certificate is very important in ice to understand let us understand more about ice certificates now if you go and log into the ice and the certificate page so here you can see that you are in the dashboard you can go to the administration you can go to certificates and then we have the list of certificate now here in that list you can see that uh, we have certificates related to so let me quickly go and highlight that what type of certificates we have so here you can see that we have system certificate and then we have trusted uh, OSCP certificates, uh, certificate signing request, and all those certificates. So let me highlight one more time here. You can go to administration, you can go to certificates, one, two, then you can check the list of certificates. I'll go and explain all these things. So system certificate, trusted certificates, OCSCP certificate signing request, certificate authority. Uh, each of these things will go and understand at least the term that what is this used for so now let's start one by one now when we are talking about the certificate system certificate so obviously this is system generated certificate means ice has uh, one certificate that will be system certificate just a certificate means who is your ca and you are trusting your root ca or ca server so those certificates are belonging to trusted certificate that is coming from the root CA. Now in the uh, case that we have to distribute the certificate, we are using simple certificate enrollment protocol, SCEP. And now suppose if you are in the distributed environment, distributed deployment, at that time we are using certificate trust list. Now the concept here is easy. Suppose if you have to update the certificate to n number of nodes, you will do, do the updation in PAN, your administration node, and from PAN it will go and push to each and every individual node. Now why this is important? So here you can see that changes. Now in ICE 1.0 to 1.3, that is EOS, EOL anyways, it was very hectic job to do the certification distribution across different nodes rather than in ICE 2.4 for example it's very easy it's point click you can go click and it will go and push the certificate automatically so the automation of the certification uh, enrollment has been already done and it's very to use it now there are some color coding if you are seeing that green certificate that was valid, red means some certificate error, yellow means warning. Maybe your certificate is going to expire and you have to do the renewal of that. So here you can see that uh, coming 1.3 plus, it's actually easy to do the enrollment. It's easy to push the certificate from your PAN to the respective PSNs. We can go to the administration and we can check the certificates, system, trusted. Now, interesting thing here is that while we are checking the trusted certificates, so here you can see that uh, for security purpose, we have trusted for infrastructure, Cisco service endpoints, uh, admin authentication. And again, these trusted certificates, they may have attributes. Now, what attributes i'm talking about here is here you can see that we when we have the trusted certificate and then now cisco has given attributes as well and we should go and check mark or check those attributes so this trusted certificate for so you can see the authentication within ice trust for client authentication and syslog now if you go and do the check mark that means that these services, whenever it is required, in the back, they will complete or they have to complete the certification process and then only you can use certain services or these services, correct? Now, in case if you have to distribute n number of certificates and you want some helper, so in that case, we can go and use the subordinate CA. 
in the large distributed deployments we are using uh, subordinate ca those are the ca who is going to help the root ca to do the deployment or do the distribution of the certificate we can go and use ice as a root c as well so that option is there now two options are there either you, you are using ice as a ca or you have your own enterprise ca managed somewhere from there you want to trust to ice so that certificate you are enrolling to uh, pan and from pan it is going to all the psn here you can see the hierarchy so in this hierarchy you can see that i have ice as a ca for example on top and then we have the obviously we are going to push all the certificate to the psns from the pan but we can use ice and then we have the standby uh, pan as well there also we are uh, updating the certificates now we are in the section two where we have to learn about the policy enforcement this section is quite big the overall weightage you can see is 25 percent and it is a uh, important section to learn understand about ice behavior and the integration with the endpoints and the external uh, sources as well what are the topics we have how we can go and integrate with ad lab means we have to do the configuration we have lab understand about different type of stores like ldap ad pki otp etc then do the configuration for wired and wireless deployment again this section is quite a big but it's very uh, important that we should understand each and everything in this section so let's try to understand first that what type of identity stores we have obviously we have the internal we have the external as well so let us discuss first about the internal identity source and what are the capabilities we have with the internal identity source so here you can see in the diagram and this diagram is again very important because you can see the protocols and the way that the endpoints so we have the endpoints they are authenticating with the nad devices then we have the psn and pan and suppose if you have external uh, identity source then uh, you can authenticate with that as well this part this ad or ldap part we'll discuss later on but let us focus on internal identity source again you can see that what type of authentication uh, protocols we have in between so let me clean this and let's go and discuss first of all more about the internal identity sources and then we'll proceed further in other section so what it will do it has the internal user store internal endpoint store uh, for all the endpoints like wired wireless or vpn we are going inside the pan and we are adding those entries we are creating that inventory what about the uh, internal user store so username password email account those things it can go and store now the question here is that is this a scalable option can it scale we'll see that what is the scale limit for the internal store so you have all uh, type of uh, devices networking devices that you can store there and they uh, they can store the attributes as well for those devices later on in the upcoming section we have to learn more about the ad and ldap deployment these are uh, coming under the external identity source where you have the radius rsa saml certificate odvc etc so you can use internal store you can use external store but you can see here that what is the problem and what's the use case we have with the internal store generally used for test bed temporary installation and it is used for very really small deployment why because in this case what is happening so here you can see that user accounts has a range of attributes mandatory password tls eep tls and peep tls do not use password based, based authentication and internal database does not support eep tls and peep tls so we have the huge restriction there 
the other restriction you have that you have certain limit that how many endpoints you can store in the internal store the way it is operating maintained on primary admin and replicate to the secondary admin node if you have the distributed uh, deployment and then it will go and uh, install all those entries to the psn correct so here you can see there is a limitation because it is suitable for a small deployment not a big deployment and that's the reason we are looking for the external identity sources external identity sources are scalable redundant and they have the authentication framework means they are supporting most of the protocols most of the authentication protocol so here you can see the examples are LDAP, radio certificate etc uh, We'll see that integration. We have lab for that in the upcoming section. So you will you can see the integration. And uh, let's just stop here in the next section. Uh, we'll start from the external source that is the Active Directory, one of the most popular external identity source we have at this point of time. Let us start where we have left off. So we want to learn now about Active Directory. Now the structure of Active Directory here you can see that forestry domain and the organizational unit. Now the Active Directory is giving us the scalability factor. It can scale and it is supporting almost all the authentication protocols. So here you can see the important points are that uh, it can be used for user network device object groups. This is hierarchical. It's a widely deployed uh, structure. Most of the places you'll find AD is being used as an external identity source. All common authentication methods are supported. Some combination of username, password, and certificate uh, validity or certificate authentication also they are supporting. Cisco Eyes can rewrite the certificate to verify a user local machine. Certificate is very important. Uh, thing we should understand how the certificate work so what i'm going to do here is that even before uh, starting the integration of ad with the ice i am going to record few videos related to how you are going to use the system certificate trusted certificate how you are going to integrate so while you are doing the integration with ad you have to install this certificate as well that's the key thing and it's very important so that's why we have few videos related to certificate and then you'll find uh, important video related to integration now while you are doing the integration uh, you will see that you have the name and the join point you will see in the lab section it can integrate up to 50 join point so from domain 1 up to domain 50 can be integrated with the ice and very important thing here is that ICE can rewrite the format and do the communication with the AD server. So here you can see that ICE is working on behalf of so any request they be, uh, any request that is coming from user who belongs to Active Directory that request can go to the ICE. ICE will validate this with the external source, external identity source. So he can rewrite that format. And communicate with the AD, and then it can further validate. Means the further authentication and authorization process will start after that. So here you can see that uh, ICE rewrite uh, in resolve ambiguity issues with AD format. Cisco ICE modify username in incoming request sent to uh, AD in require format. It can also rewrite identity in certificate and here you can see the snapshot again we are going to do the lab where uh, we will see that what options we have so once you are doing the integration with ice uh, ice to active directory so then at that point of time we have the diagnostic tool uh, we can run the diagnostic tool so you can check that oh you have issue with dns dhcp etc apart from that we can go and check that that particular user belongs to how many groups so those validation validity also you can do that is you will see in the follow-up 
type uh, video so let's start with certificate installation and then ad integration and then after that once we complete this then we'll go and move to the ldap integration now we have to perform a lab related to certificate enrollment so let me go and log into the lab all right so we are in the lab section here you can see we have the fresh new eyes and i can go to my microsoft ad server first of all i need to download the ca certificate so here you can see that i have this option download a ca certificate let us click there download this certificate and then i have this option download ca certificate it is getting downloaded at this place so here you can see that we have the download location from where i can uh, upload this certificate let's go to ice inside ice uh, we have this administration tab inside that we can go to certificate and then first of all you can check the uh, various type of certificates like system certificate then we have trusted and others now once we are inside this trusted certificate we can go and import what we have downloaded we have this option choose the file let's go there and let's move to the folder where we have downloaded the certificate now here i can go and check the date but this is the certificate that uh, cr6 that you can see so once we download this here you can see that we have options first of all we can go and give any friendly name i'll give this name as a ice and ad then uh, we have option like trusted for so this is trusted for authentication then trust for client authentication and syslog trust for authentication of cisco uh, services as per our requirement we can go and choose this option click submit now once this will get submitted so here you can see that we have some other pop-up do not show this again it's okay click the submit and we can click yes it is saving and now we have our certificate uh, inside trusted certificate next what i can do that i can go and verify this so here you can see that we have the ice ad in i can go and click edit just to check you can go and check the details if i scroll down you can see various information related to this ice a certificate that we have all right now the next step we have is to generate the csr so i can go click certificate signing request on top i have this csr option you can go there again you can see that we have various options related to csr and uh, node is ice1 we need to fill all these options that we are seeing here so i'll go and fill it my ou that's the organization name is it and my organization say for example i can give ice lab city i can go and give say st san jose st state is california and this information we should have uh, before we are uh, generating the csr all right so once we go and fill all this information the next task we have is to import this so we'll go and generate this and then we can import as well all right so let's complete this and we can go and add the dns name say for example demo dot local i can go and add more entries there so let me add some more entries and then 
I have some other entries as well. So you can follow the same steps that I'm doing here. Now here you can see that your DNS order that you are putting that is going from a more specific to the generic. So first of all, it will try and try to resolve with demo.local, then ice1 demo.local, and then we have the wildcard is anything and then demo.local. After that, if you want, we can give the specific IP addresses as well. And that's actually uh, the recommended one. We should do like this. And finally, I have one more entry. So let me go and add that entry as well. So I can go here and I can add, say, uh, for example, 122 if I have, and then finally I'll go and add the IP address field as well. So the IP address field is 10.1.100.21. Great. Uh, let's uh, continue and check the other things. The key type is RSA. The key length is also uh, okay. The digest to sign with is SHA-256. That is also in uh, in between the lines, uh, the tightest one is SHA-512, but we're okay with 256 bit. Finally, I can go and click generate. So let me click generate this CSR. Once it is getting generated, I can export this. And now I have my CSR certificate that is up and running that we can use it uh, for further certification process. All right, so let's continue. So now we have the CSR generated. What we can do here that just select this uh, CSR, click view, and then you can go to the CSR content and just copy it. I can copy and close this. Why we are copying it? Because now we'll go to the AD server. You can go to the home page. Once you go inside the home, you will see a request a certificate. So from that CSR, we are going to generate a certificate that further we are going to use inside the ICE. So here you can see that we have the advanced certificate request. I can go there. I can paste whatever I have copied from the ICE CSR. And here, because since it is going to use for admin, so I can go and use this for a web server attributes. We can leave it. Click the submit button. And then we can download the certificate. So we can wait for a few seconds. Uh, it is generating the certificate in the back here you can see that we can download the certificate again it's important here to note that we have der encoded or we have base 64 encoded here i'm using base 64 encoded and then i can download this certificate now this is 7.cr that we will use again let me show you the location of this particular certificate again this is inside the download folder I can copy this location. My certificate is 7.cr. Now going back inside the ICE, uh, we are back into the ICE. What we need to do with this CSR that we have generated the CA inside the uh, AD server or inside the root CA server, we need to bind it. So here you have this bind certificate option. Just click there, choose the file, and we have the location, although we have this uh, cert seven. So I can go and click open. And then I can give any good friendly name. So for example, I'll give ice one, admin, a wildcard, cert. So this is the name. And since this is, this certificate is going to be utilized for the admin and uh, because admin is going to use it the services will get to restart and it will take some 15 to 20 minutes to come back on correct 
So here it's important that uh, we can check the use, uh, uses of this certificate. And here you can see that we have uses related to use certificate to authentication to ICE admin portal. Then we have the option to use for EAP authentication, radius, pixie grid portal, etc. So let's use this for admin and then click submit. Now, once you click submit, you can see that the system will now restart it. Services will get to restart and it will take some time to come back up. Uh, it will take 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, it took exactly 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes, uh, we should go and validate the certificate installation. Now, there are various ways that we can go and validate it. So first of all, you can log in via the CLI and you can go and check the application status ICE. You should see that your applications are up and running because the ICE got rebooted. So you can go and execute this command and you can check the output. Mostly you'll find that uh, your applications are running. And here you should see that your application server is up and running. Apart from that, other services are also up and running. Now next, we can go and log into the ICE again one more time. Now once you log in here, it's very important that you can go and check the connection. So here it is showing the connection is secure. Now if you go and click uh, to the secure connection and certificate and this valid, here, uh, here you will find that the same certificate that we have installed is showing here. So we can go and first of all validate the serial number. Remember uh, we have our certificate as well that uh, we have downloaded from the root CA, Microsoft root CA. So let me open that as well parallelly. And here you can see that we have the details and we can check the serial number. Serial number you can see that we have the same serial number. Now this serial number, I can again go and validate inside the ICE as well. I will show you that. Remember this 016E. I will log into the ICE. I will go to administration certificate and I'll show you that as well. Let's uh, validate or verify first of all the ICE certificate. So here you can see that signature hash algorithm. We have given uh, SHA-256, who is the issuer, all this information we have given apart from that, we have given the IP addresses as well, the DNS as well. So let me scroll down and you can see that we have information related to DNS entries as well. So I can go to the subject and Let's scroll down and here you can see that we have the SAN. These details we have fitted when we have uh, created the CSR. All right, finally, you can go and check the thumbprint as well. Let's close this and we can go and inside ICE, we can go to the certificates. Here inside system certificate, Initially, we have wildcard cert. I have given some, uh, I have done some uh, change in the name. We have wildcard.cert and you can go and verify this as well. So I can go and click view. And here you can see the details. Now, the order that we are seeing here that inside root CA, we have the identity cert, uh, certificate that is the ICE. Now in large deployment, uh, already we have covered this thing in the theory portion that we have subordinate certificates or uh, intermediate certificates as well. In lab production, it's okay that uh, lab environment is okay that we have the CA and the identity uh, services. All right, let's go again to the view. And uh, here you can see that inside root CA, we have ICE demo if I scroll down. We can match all these informations that we already seen inside the certificate. Let me close this. Now, since we have installed this certificate only related to admin, 
but if you want to add some other certificate features or other certificate rules as well so you can go and check so for example eap authentication i can check i can go and add the portal as well inside portal i can give the portal name so for example ice lab you can give any name i have given ice lab for us like that and again we can go and save it now this time this will not get rebooted because this is just the features that we are adding inside this certification process so now our certificate is up and running we have covered all the steps so we have covered that how we can uh, create the certificate uh, you can generate the csr from that how we can have the roots here you can go and bind that certificate with the ice server once it is binded then you can go and check that your services are secure Min means whenever you log into the ice you can go and check the valid certificate that is there in the web browser all right so let's stop here next important lab we have related to ice ad integration already i have covered the theoretical section in the previous videos so let's continue with the lab all right so we are inside the ice now we want to integrate ice with the ad you have multiple ways to do it you can go to the work center and then you have external id source or you can go to the administrator and then you have this external identity sources so you can go and reach to the same place via multiple ways now once you reach here you can see that you have the active directory ldap odbc radius token etc at the moment we are focusing on integrating the active directory so you click active directory and then you click this add button once you are there then you can go and give the join point name so in my case that is a demo dot local and then again i can go and give demo dot local as my active directory domain name click submit then it will ask you username and the password so let's give the username and the password first and suppose if you give any wrong uh, credential here obviously it will throw an error but ice will give you the message that your username password or maybe your organizational unit is incorrect so let me give the username and the password and then i can go and specify the ou so let me go and give the ou in my case say ou equals uh, ice and then again ou equal to hcc click ok if everything is correct ad will get integrated with ice now once we have the integration done then what next you can go and retrieve the ad information or you can go and retrieve the ad group information so you can go and click to the group and then here you have this add button you can go and click select groups from the eddy uh, you have this wild card here that is uh, asterisk that means everything click retrieve the group now what we can do here that inside my eddy we have so many groups and we want to select a few of the groups or if we want to deselect few of the groups we can select or deselect and then click ok so now you can see the list of the groups that we have we can go and click save then we can go and check the attributes as well same process we can select the attributes from the directory and suppose i have i want to check one attribute related to one of the uh, employee so i can go and give say employee to, and you can go and retrieve the attributes related to this employee now retrieving the attributes again uh, we have the option we can go and select some 
attributes from here click OK and then we can go and click Save now it's very important for us to understand that while we are doing the integration of our AD we can go and run the diagnostic tool so you can select your AD you can run this diagnostic tool and then we have option here run the test now and in bottom also you have run test and run all the test means you want to check the AD services that are running fine or not so what will happen that I uh, will communicate with AD and then it will check that inside AD the services related to DNS, Kerberos, LDAP, they are working or not, or AD is healthy or not. That's a very important. Now suppose if you have any issue related to NTP that we have seen in the theoretical section, that if entity is not uh, configured correctly or any of the important attributes is not there, then uh, you will see some sort of error that will get exchanged. Likewise, again, we can go back and if you want to check the user, then that option is also there. So you can see where we have the diagnostic tool. We have the test user as well. I can go and click test user. We have one test user called employee. So employee two, and then I can go and use the lookup. I can click test. Now this particular employee user, you can see the success message. We have authentication result. We can go and check the groups. We can go and check the attributes as well. Likewise, if you want with this employee, you can go and check the uh, MSRPC and we should give the password and we can testify it. Again, if password is wrong, you will get failure message. But yes, the authentication result, the group attributes, they are up and running their good fine. So this is the way that we can go and integrate and we can do the validation testing integration of AD with ICE. We can do the integration and then we can testify it. This video and follow up video, we are going to learn about LDAP and other identity sources. Lightweight directory access protocol, it is also using the same type of schema that we have in the Active Directory, Sun Directory, etc. Because the build is X.500 based directory servers. Now the problem with LDAP is that it is using plain test authentication method. Although the session for LDAP is encrypted or it's actually protected via TLS. Now the other method is radius. Uh, for radius also we have one small video. Uh, radius means related to 